everything will change in less than one second. Believers should not pay attention to any false teaching on the fact that there is no such thing as rapture. The Bible has given us enough proof to show that a rapture is an event that will undoubtedly come to pass. The Bible gave us accounts of two men who never tasted death but were transfigured. Enoch walked with God to the point that he took him from the earth. Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Elijah was also caught up from the earth by a chariot of fire. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11 As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. If God did it before, he can do it again. There are no impossibilities with God. Believers should, therefore, get themselves prepared for Elijah and Enoch's experience at the rapture of the saints. The transition of Elijah and Enoch is a biblical proof that rapture will definitely come to pass. We must watch and wait earnestly for the rapture event by living a holy life. There is not unholy that would be associated with Christ. If we would be counted worthy at the rapture of the saints, we must live our lives with the consciousness that rapture could take place at any time. No one knows the day in which this event will happen. It is going to be the most sudden event that will ever take place on earth. Blessed are those who will be found ready. Are you ready? If rapture should take place now, are you sure you will be transited? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 through 52. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. While describing the event of the rapture to the Corinthian believers, Paul explained that the transition of the believers will happen in a twinkling of an eye. Someone has said that the average person blinks somewhere between 10,000 to 20,000 times a day. In one of those times, Jesus could return. That is an awesome thought. Paul's reference to in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, then, is a reference to the speed of our resurrection, glorification, the change from mortality to immortality, from corruption to incorruption. We will be changed from our natural, mortal, corruptible body to a spiritual, immortal, and incorruptible body in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Our transformation and transition will take place simultaneously in the twinkling of an eye. Everything about us will change. Our mortality will give way for immortality. The corruption of our physical bodies will give way for the incorruptibleness of our spiritual and glorious bodies. We will all put on our celestial bodies in the twinkling of an eye. Bible Rev Commentary states the following regarding the phrase twinkling of an eye. The change will be instant in the twinkling of an eye. This is translated from the Greek phrase enrimpe othalomo, which most literally means flickering the eye and was the ancient reference to the blink of an eye. This depicts not only the rapid movement of the eyelid, but the speed at which the eye turns from one direction to another. The underlying point is something so rapid, so instantaneous that it defies measurement. To appreciate how fast it will be, just blink your eyes and confirm how fast the Bible says we shall be changed when the last trumpet shall sound. 
This is a mystery that we cannot fully comprehend by our own understanding. The God we serve has given us the hope of resurrection through the raising of His dear Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are assured that in the same way Jesus was raised from the dead after three days of being buried, we shall also be raised and changed in the twinkling of an eye. How God is going to perform that, which He has promised, may be beyond our comprehension. But we have to align our hearts and make ourselves ready for what God is set to do. The first thing to look out for is whether the Spirit of God which raised Christ from the dead is dwelling in us. If He is in us, we will no doubt experience that which God will do by changing us in the twinkling of an eye. Do you know that distance and time are not barriers in to God? When the Word of God says we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, then we need not to doubt its possibility. In the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed and caught up to meet the Lord when the trumpet sounds. Paul wrote a letter to the Thessalonian church relating how the rapture event will take place. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 through 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. When the Lord descends with the voice of an archangel, who will sound the trumpet? Even the dead in Christ will rise first before the living saints will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. All these are going to happen in less than a second, in the twinkling of an eye. You see, there has never been any event that will be as sudden as that of the rapture. The rapture is going to be a flash event that will throw the entire world in gross confusion. The rapture of the saints will be unexplainable and unfathomable by the people of the world. It is going to be a sudden disappearance of the saints. The world will not have an idea of what hit it. The supernatural power of God will be at work and the whole world will be puzzled. Imagine all the saints in the world being caught up in the twinkling of an eye. I remember the first time my pastor ever preached on the subject of the rapture. The first question that came to my mind is, how can I be sure I won't be left behind in the rapture? And the truth is, this is a question that a lot of believers ask themselves silently when the subject matter of rapture is being discussed. How can I be sure I will make the rapture? Today's teaching will help you to know what you need to do and the preparations you need to make in order to be sure that you are prepared for the rapture. If you are a defaulter in any of the indicators that you are going to make the rapture, then you need to make amends as soon as possible because the rapture will happen suddenly at a time no one knows. To be sure you won't be left behind in the rapture, let's quickly examine the following steps that you must take before the rapture. The first step is, repent of your sins and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
The first preparation anyone can ever make towards the rapture is to believe in Jesus Christ as his or her personal Lord and Savior. Jesus is only returning for the saints, and the saints from God's standpoint are those who have accepted Jesus Christ as the Son of God, believed that he died for their sins, and was buried, and that he resurrected on the third day. It is only those who believe in Jesus that will not perish. There are many people who think that once a person behaves well and morally on earth, such person will make heaven. But that is not true, and more so, it is unscriptural. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 says that we are saved by grace and that salvation is not earned by our works, otherwise we should boast for it. Anyone who has not received Jesus Christ into life cannot be part of the people who will be raptured, no matter how morally behaved they are. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to the Father except through him. The only way to access God is through Christ, and the first preparation and greatest preparation you must make to be sure you will make the rapture is to repent of your sins and receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. What that means is that you accept that you are saved by Christ, and that after your salvation you allow him to begin to lead you according to his will. Wanting to make rapture without accepting Christ is like trying to enter a kingdom against which you have rebelled. Acts 16 verse 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. There is no other way to be saved than to believe in Jesus Christ. Our salvation is tied to our faith in Christ Jesus. Your salvation is not tied into whether or not you are a good person, or whether or not you give to the poor. Then, first of all, get saved. If you have given your life to Christ, you have started your journey to heaven, and you have made your first preparation to be raptured if Christ comes at any time. Salvation is a prerequisite to make the rapture. If you fail to be saved, you will fail to be raptured. Number 2. The joy of salvation and the hope of glory. Isaiah 12 verse 3 says that with joy we shall draw out of the wells of salvation. The second indication that you will make the rapture is the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation is like a spiritual indicator in our hearts that reminds us that we are not citizens of this world. That joy is unconditional. It is not the same as happiness. You might be passing through a serious challenge, but then the joy of salvation just breaks forth in your heart, and you are reminded that challenges will someday be over. The joy of salvation is produced by the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Joy is the fruit of the Holy Spirit according to Galatians 5 verse 22. Each time we commit sin, we lose that joy until we reconcile with God. David prayed to God in Psalms 51 verse 11 and 12 saying, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and Hold me with thy free spirit. There would not be a need for restoration if something was not lost. David asked God to restore the joy of his salvation because sin had made him lose it. So one of the ways you can be sure you will make the rapture is if you have the joy of salvation. 
This is the joy of salvation, that one day I am going to be in heaven. One day I am going to be with the King. That joy reminds you that one day you will meet Jesus. One day you will meet God. One day you will be in glory. One of these days I am going to walk through the gates of the city. That is what kept Abraham going. Hebrews 11 verse 10, he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. That is what kept Moses going. Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible. And of course, that is what kept our Lord Jesus going as well. Hebrews 12 verse 2, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. It is dangerous to live for a week without something reminding you of heaven. No matter how busy your schedule is, the joy of salvation should pop up as a notification in your heart about your alignment with God. If you have lost the joy of salvation, then you need to pray like David until it is restored. It is one of the checks of whether you are in tune with God or not. The joy of salvation is what generates the hope of glory in the believers. If you do not have the joy of salvation, you will never hope to enter into eternal glory with Christ. What I am saying is very practical. If you have ever thought of going to heaven, that hope was birthed by a joy that is unexplainable, and that is what the joy of salvation is. Colossians 1 verse 27, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among with the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Anyone that has Christ in him or her should have the hope of glory. If you claim to be saved and you do not have the hope of glory, then there is a problem somewhere else and you need to settle it fast. Number 3. The Lord knows those that are his. He will leave none of them behind. Jesus said in John 10 verse 14, I am the Good Shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Jesus knows those that truly belong to him. If you are truly saved, you do not have any need to be scared about whether you will make the rapture or not. Christ will by himself figure you out in that day when he shall call up his saints. He knows every one of us that belongs to him by name. He is our shepherd, and we are the sheep of his pasture. When the trumpet shall sound at rapture, none of the saints will be left behind. We are not going to be caught up by our own strength, but by the Spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be quickened to rise above the skies. 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ said that it is not all those that call him Lord that will enter into the kingdom of God, but them that do the will of his Father. So, Christ knows those who call him Lord with their mouths, but have their hearts far away from him. And he also knows those that call and serve him from a pure heart. The question we should all ask ourselves is, am I really serving God, or am I deceiving myself? All those who call on the name of the Lord are to depart from iniquity. Once you are serving God with purity of heart, you can be sure that Christ will find you at rapture. The rapture will be selective. Only those who Christ has in his register are going to be caught up. The church may have your name in her record, but does Christ have you in his register? What matters most is that Christ should recognize you. If you are not recognized by Christ, you cannot make the rapture. 
But if you have been serving the Lord faithfully, there is nothing to fear. You are good for the rapture. Up you would go when the trumpet sounds. Love not the world. The rapture is coming soon. 